Hey, Krizza, we got nothing for jokes, but I am Bobby T. And I'm Krizza, and we're celebrating this toy life for life. I think I was supposed to do something different it's there. Been, no, no, yeah, no uh, okay. maybe. It's been I, a while yeah. since we've done this. I it's think a, you wanted me to do the sign language letters for TL. Yes, for TL for yeah, yeah, so I, that you could read it across. Yeah, but I don't no, know how to do that. Things no. up, so we, we didn't really practice that. No. But it's okay. It has been a while, guys. How is everybody doing? We have the chat going live right now. Uh, we decided um, earlier on we're going to kind of split up the format a little bit uh, because we do get requests for different formats, really. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this show is going to be Hall Show. We're mm -hmm. talking toys. We're kind of talking everything. Open chat, as always. But we're going to separate the what are you talking or what are you reading, watching, uh, that portion of the show. And that's going to be an audio-only podcast on our Anchor FM. Yes. Um, and then we'll also have our Pop Life episodes every week, which are going to be featuring more of the pops that we get every week and why we got them. Just going a little more in-depth to the stuff that we like, the stuff that we want, and the stuff that we got. Um, that's going to be its own edited content. So it's a way to really break up what we were doing in one giant episode into more uh, digestible pieces. But this show will still more than likely be super long and full of nonsense. Yeah. Tons it's of nonsense. already... Nonsense. <laughs> All right. So uh, before we get into everything, you know, like, share, and subscribe at This Toy Life, um, all that nonsense. You know, uh, later on, I'll just make it scroll around the screen. Who cares? Um, all right. Yes, Michelle, how you doing? We missed you, too. Yeah. Uh, it has been a while. It's been crazy since being away because I did find out we had giveaways. Mm -hmm. And we sent them out months ago. Like, I didn't even, you know. Bye. Yeah, you know, just kind of ship the stuff and, and forgot all about it. In that time, in that shipment, it turns out um, I had shipped away some prototypes for a figure that I was working on. Uh, it's the Chakan figure by uh, Mega Merge Toys. Um, so that got shipped out, and like four days later, they're like, "Dude, where is, where is the stuff?" Mm -hmm. And I checked the ship, the the uh, the tracking, and it's just lost. We we couldn't find them. I had to then crank out this thing overnight. And I didn't think about the other packages. And I didn't hear anything back from anybody. So I just figured, all right, they made it. You know, you look, packages get lost. Yeah. Turns out all of the packages got lost. The whole, the whole, I, everything that I dropped off was, was gone. Yeah, I don't know what you did to this post office to make them hate you. But I don't know, maybe like uh, this next holiday season, like a... I got a fruit. What, is, what a fruit Red bread Bulls. is that? I'll yeah. bring Red Bulls. There you go. Because, dude, whatever happened. So, but... um. I spoke to the the old winners. Um, they were okay with it, and we're gonna put together some right now. If you guys could see the rest of the arcade right now, it's insanity yeah. down here. Uh, but it's all getting in order, and I have some really cool packages I want to put together for the people. Um, but we did have one of our longtime viewers was Jacob Luna. Apparently, he did not like. He's very upset at me for this, and I, I really tried to speak reasonably with him, and he's just like really like fired off in he a wants crazy his, way he like, wants his free stuff man he wanted his stuff man yeah. and it was in honestly the original stuff that people won was from a trip that i went on literally last year 12 months ago uh and it was from a discount disney employee store where i got the stuff for so cheap it was 10 bucks worth of stuff maybe um now the people were cool about it so i'm, I'm gonna send out some much better stuff yeah uh, but yeah, it was a, a really, really weird situation. So guys, if you did win something from us and you never got it, please tell us in the chat or uh, email us or get a, get a hold of us at this toy life on all the things. So uh, we're going to start talking about toys now. Finally, uh, let me take a sip of this Red Bull. Have you played this Pac-Man yet? No. Very good. Is it? Yeah, it's really good. It's a... Uh, um, it's an app game, and when you get the Red Bull, you get the code, and then the code lets you get things. Gotcha. Pac-Man gets a Red Bull and just goes absolutely insane. It's just like, raw. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Speaking of games, mm -hmm. you have um, a Nintendo Switch, right? I sure do. Do you have uh, the online service, the Nintendo mm -hmm. Switch? Okay. So there's apparently a Tetris game that they've released <laughs> for free um, that you get for with having the subscription and it's uh a multiplayer tetris game so y you're doing your own thing and, and trying to you know make lines and destroy them and everything like that but other people can send bricks onto your okay i guess yeah, map tetris or whatever two, yeah did that. 
And, uh, yeah, and they can, like, really, like, screw you over. So it's kind of like a Tetris Battle Royale. It's called Tetris 99. All right. I'll, yeah. like it. I'll check it I out. I haven't played it because I, I, uh, I'm not, a like, a big Tetris guy. I have uh, been loving lately the um, Nintendo Switch uh, NES Virtual Console. That yes. They're giving that, away yeah. free games if, you, if you're part of the online service. I've been playing the hell out of uh, Master Blaster mm -hmm. or Blaster Master. I can never remember the way it was said. Yeah. Um, but they just added Zelda 2, the original Zelda yep. was on there. And then they're giving these uh, special editions where, like, all of the map is open to you. You mm -hmm. start the game with the Master Sword. You start with, like, everything maxed out. And, and uh, in, the, in the case of the Zelda, it's, you get every item that's a non-dungeon item. Yeah. So you have to go get the boomerang. You have to get the raft. You have to get these things. But you don't have to get the meat because that came from a butcher. Oh, that's pretty good. You don't man. have to get the bracelet because that came from somewhere mm -hmm. else. So, like, they automatically give you all those things. It's kind of weird to play, though. Yeah. You're just, like, blazing through the first level, like, Master Sword kills mm -hmm. all. So. Well, they have um, they have the ice hockey game on there, too, which is Love great. It. Because, yeah, you can it. play all the old school countries. Yeah, it's great. Uh, here's another tip that I just learned about the Nintendo online service, if you guys don't know about it yet. There are original NES controllers that you can buy for the Switch to play uh, the old school NES games. Now you can only buy them if you are a Nintendo online subscriber, but they're like 60 bucks and you get two original NES controllers that like clip onto the okay. side of your Switch or whatever and then... And I don't know, well, I mean a Joy-Con, two Joy-Cons are 80. Yeah, so, the Joy Cons, they're like a thing. Like then you click on. I don't know you, for you. for sixty bucks. I think people are selling them on eBay for like hundreds of dollars. Hoochie Mama. Yeah. So if you guys Thank are, you. yeah. It, well, that's the thing. So if you guys are Nintendo uh, online subscribers, um, and you want to play the original NES games with an NES style controller, just go to the Nintendo site. I think it's one set of controllers mm -hmm. per like subscribe or whatever so you can okay. get one and i can get one and, and that's it uh but yeah so if you guys are looking to play those old school games with an old school controller go to the nintendo site uh, but, you can you know, buy a pair I, I for don't actually bucks. the more i think about i i don't really hate that because playing some of these old school games with the analog yeah it doesn't work like sometimes you want to push forward and mm -hmm. push up instead or uh, i'm noticing that with um with Link, yes, the, the Zelda two. There's a lot of things you have to push down for, mm -hmm. and you're just like not pushing that. And Mario two, they just put up Mario two. Oh, which nice. I love yeah. that game. I forgot how much I love that game. It's so weird, but it's so good. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I think for sixty bucks, that's not a bad deal considering two Joy Cons are eighty. Yeah. So, um, but I did not know about that. Actually, yeah. someone told me my Nintendo rep actually told me about that the other day. So this is interesting right now. We'll, we're just, let's just jump into some toys, sure, because we got some. So, um, MIB Master saying he's got lots of Star Wars twelve inch figures. Speaking of, this is one that um, I have to watch out diving into the twelve inch figures. Yeah, I love them so much, but I love them too much. So I know that if I open one, I will not stop, and I'll just go to Hot Toys' website, and suddenly I'll mm -hmm. have packages coming every yeah. week, and <laughs> it's not good. Like, I know where this ends, so I really try to stay away from it, but this is one I couldn't stay away from. Um, I got this at the, uh, it's the Northeast Toy Show. Uh, it's in North Haven, Connecticut, uh, at the Best Western. I'm actually going to be there on March 31st. Uh, doing the show we have a ton of toys to sell a ton of pops and shirts mm -hmm. and all kinds of toy life stuff we'll be selling wrestling figures and customs uh, so definitely check that out march 31st uh, i'll be putting a link to that down into the description and over here into the uh, the chat but it is a, it's a really fun show straight up toys there's some comic books but it's mostly toys but i got this one from john cousin he's the uh the organizer of the show gave me actually a really good price on this and i love qui-gon jim and I didn't know this really existed. Um, it's a full 12-inch Qui-Gon Jinn with the full clothing, extra hands, really detailed everything. Um, I don't know if the lights are going to glare that out. But I'm so afraid to open him. Not because, uh, not because like, oh no, I'm going to open him and, and then, you know, he won't be worth money. I just, I'm addicted. Yeah. Immediately. This 
this just further fuels my speculation that there are Star Wars fans that like characters that don't do anything. Well, all right. So <laughs> with Qui Gon Jinn, here's one of the things that I really, really, really loved about him is that he just kind of showed a different side of what the Jedi yes. was. He got a movie to kind of at least get his points across. Yeah. So that was really cool. And I did read all the books and the comics. Mm -hmm. And so I really got into the, the character. And then when you go later into um, uh, Clone Wars, yeah. Yoda says he's been talking to Qui Gon Jinn. And that's how he mm -hmm. figures out how to become a force ghost, and that's how then Obi Wan figures it out. And yeah, so no, no, I mm, quite kind of important. Uh, kind of important. <laughs> it's kind of been there for, kind of been there for some things. <laughs> I just I don't I do enjoy the fact that he um, that he does kind of bring uh, the the here and now aspect of the force yes. two stars it's like okay quit looking to the future or whatever we got to deal with what's going on right right now um but i don't know i mean i just again he doesn't he, he every like he's a cool character mm. that kind of got pushed pushed away like in like, one really movie fast. yeah exactly like, and then, but then everybody like loves him and it's like yeah i can understand if you were saying this about darth maul yeah well and i mean why that's you another would say darth this about boba Fett. yes <laughs> i get your arguments but qui-gon jinn is something different um so here's another 12 inch that so i've been organizing so many things down here in the arcade and in, in the theater and in the, in the, the archives there's so many toys down here i'm coming across some really awesome stuff so i'm going to pull some of that stuff up uh, along with just the most recent stuff I've been picking up. This is a Tower Records Battlestar Galactica oh God, Cylon Tower. exclusive. <laughs> exactly. This I got this when they were closing. Uh, it was on sale for 8 bucks, and everything was 75% off. So this was $2. Nice. Um, it's a 12-inch gold-plated, um, electroplated Cylon. Um, so you, you're actually seeing a legit unboxing. I've... Uh, all these years, I never, never opened them. I would open Probably it right because now. you bought it and then you forgot that you had it, and no, then. No, <laughs> I knew I'd always open. I'd always find it, and I'm like, "Oh, you're so beautiful." Um. So yeah, I want, I want to open this so, so you guys can see that. Wow. Speaking of obsolete, um, that thing's gorgeous. Music stores. I bought my uh, box collection of the Misfits. From a coconuts. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this thing is beautiful. And I don't know if you guys can really see the the shininess on the armor there, but I love the electroplated armor. Yeah, let's see a little ding ding. So um yeah, I always I always like this piece. It just very simple, but uh just very effective. So cool. So all right. What do you got over there? Uh, let's see. You got a got a bunch of stuff, so just we, pull it up. Yeah, we do have a bunch of stuff. Uh, do you want to go with the diamond select stuff? Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So uh, we're gonna do a more in depth episode on this because there's been so much awesome Ghostbuster stuff, and Baby T loves Ghostbusters nice. right now. Absolutely goes nuts for it. So Zacho from uh, formerly of Toy Fair Magazine and now with Diamond Select Toys. Uh, sent us over these real Ghostbuster figures. They came out back at the uh, the beginning of February. You could find them. I saw them at FYE. I've seen them at some of the game stores, um, and I've also seen them at Newberry Comics. Mm -hmm. So they're in comic book shops and everything. They are Diamond exclusive, so you're going to find them anywhere that's a Diamond distributor or, or a Diamond outlet. What is awesome about this is that it comes with, there are 15 different figures, 15 or 16 figures, that you're going to, is it 15 figures? Yeah. You get 15 separate pieces and it makes the archway of the Ghostbusters firehouse mm -hmm. in scale to the seven inch figures. So it's going to be like this high it's when all said and piece, done. Yeah. It's going to be a really big diorama piece. Looks really, really awesome. Um, <clears throat> so this is the, uh, the, we got the Winston. They've only released three so far. They're going to release three more later. Uh, but the first three are Winston. And they, this is with the uh, real Ghostbusters animated heads and colorways for the bodies. Uh, it does look like they did a recast for the bodies from the original uh, Ghostbusters movie figures. 
Uh, but still, it's an, it was an amazing sculpt to begin with, so I really don't care. I, I yeah. love them. Uh, we also have a Slimer, uh, which again, we were, we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. Uh, they did a recast for the body, uh, is, is a repaint, retooling, uh, but the heads are all different, and so the look is way different. Uh, it has the floating mm -hmm. base thing to make a, a really cool diet. And then, like, with the it. hot dog head where he's got all the... Yeah, the this one, it doesn't have dip. the hot dog head. Oh, this one doesn't? Oh, okay. No, thought... no, yeah, this one has, like, a, a smile face, a cantankerous face, uh, the blah, blah, blah face... Mm -hmm. Uh, the movie Slimer has kind of that kind of evil face because he was a bad guy. Yeah, you know. Uh, and then and then it's got the um, oops, no, knocking my <laughs> knocking all your stuff over. <laughs> and then um, then it's got the the hot dog mouth. So, oh, and then finally, what was the other one we got? Uh, Egon. Egon. Yeah. And then the final one is Egon. So, uh, gonna go back one sec here. Egon. Egon. And then the final one is Egon. Okay, so. that's not bad. So I just wanted to check the audio to make mm -hmm. sure that we were sounding okay for the moment. Um, I think I figured out what we need for the phone as we're oh, okay. as we're talking. It's something we have before. I just got to find it. Nice. So um, we're going to do a more in-depth uh, unboxing of these. So stay tuned for that. That's one video I definitely Yeah, made. I loved this cartoon when I was a kid. And uh, it's actually on Netflix. And I, I mm. had recently uh, re-watched it. Um, it does not. It's pretty, it's pretty dark, dude. It doesn't hold up well in terms of like animation style, no. but uh, yeah, it was it was an okay cartoon. Actually, um, what I really liked a, a byproduct of that cartoon was the ectoplasm high C. That uh, drink was was awesome. Uh, was a huge fan of that. <laughs> always asking for that. Ecto cooler. Uh, yeah. Oh That's man. Awesome. I was such a huge fan of that. I I always asked my mom uh, to get that for me when you know she packed me a lunch and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and if not, just catching one of these. Exactly. Because it was the '80s, and apparently it was okay to say these. Things. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're gonna make another video on these. These are really really awesome. Uh, Baby T loves the Ghostbusters mm -hmm. right now. Did it go black? Uh, well, now the camera's facing me. There we go. Hmm. Weird. You're good now. Yep, oh, there we are. Weird. You know, it's... Uh... Yeah, I, I know what it is. You know, it's uh, it times that... This phone times out. The, uh, we had the old app kind of set up the way we wanted it. I got a new, better phone with a better camera, and now uh, this is what happens. Oh, well. Editing. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Mm. Guys, I'm sorry mm. that happened. Uh, mm. We're still trying to kind of figure out the new little setup here. Um, let Chris get his mic on. We'll start right back up. It's been so long, we just forgot how to do everything. We just forgot all of it. We need notes. We need notes, bro. Not notes. <laughs> I still, to this day, I can't believe we seriously got crap yeah. for notes. Like wanting to just... <laughs> just notes? Oh, man. First they came from Marvel, now they came from... <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I know Baby T's really loving Netflix, mm -hmm. really loving real Ghostbusters. When we saw this at Comic-Con... She, of all the things, she really actually gravitated towards it, and it really helped that it was on like that second to the bottom show. Yeah. Uh, if you go back to the interview we did with Zach Goat, you'll actually see we do talk about this line, mm -hmm. and they do have the rest of the line there. Um, when we just went to Toy Vault, I was trying to find Ghostbusters yeah. because she really wants the animated ones, because mm -hmm. you know. So try it, but they're oof, they're expensive compared you know compared to this. I'd rather go to this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems like the. Build of the build a fig piece. It's like the hot thing to do now. It, it seems like every every modern like toy comes with another piece. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Levi saying, uh, "Who gives a crap?" Yvette Nicole Brown from Community is loved for her notes when she goes on Talking Dead. Yeah, she absolutely is. But uh, we we apparently re some wrestling fans we had notes yeah, one time because it was umbrage. a massive pay per view yeah. and we got so much crap. So guys, if this does go out again, just know that it's because it timed out. And I'm I can only assume that it's uh, oh we paused up again. Hmm. What the heck happened? I don't know. 
No, I don't think we did. I don't know what the heck's going on here. <laughs> no. What the heck's going on? We don't even know anymore. All right, so um, let's just, again, we're going to dive right back in here. So uh, if we do go out, it's because we got a like weird bad connection it's and all kinds of, of badness is happening. Technical difficulties. That's, oh, yeah. But yeah. this is us at least coming back. At least, yeah. we're, at least we're talking toys. So speaking of going back into toys, this is one we've shown before. Oh. I know Chris absolutely Dude, uh, loves yeah, this man. one. Yeah, man. One of oh. my favorite horror movies of all time. That new NECA one is really cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's the reanimator figure. And this is the Monstars one. Um, it was a really limited version. I don't even remember where I got this thing. But super awesome. It's got the uh, the reanimated head and the... Uh, the Syringe. Weird syringe with yeah. the green gems in there. Uh, Super awesome. Did I ever tell you the story about about one of the first times like I, I'd watched Reanimator? No. So, no, so uh, I was working at Pacific Sunwear, mm. and I met uh, a girl at, helping out at another store, and we were talking about horror movies. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, I love Reanimator. You know, it's like it's it's such a great horror movie. It's so cheesy. Yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. And um, she wanted to get together and watch it. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, whatever. We'll hang out, watch Reanimator and a couple other horror movies. So we we go, I go down to her house. And at the time, uh, she was still living with her, her parents. So I go down to her parents' house. And I forget what movie we watched first. But he fell asleep. Her father was watching the first movie with us. Mm -hmm. So he had fallen asleep. <laughs> He had, he had fallen asleep, and then uh, we were going to watch another movie, and I was like, well, do you want to watch this other movie, or do you want to watch Reanimator? And she goes, I want to watch Reanimator. I'm like, all right, cool. So I put it, I put it in, the, and this is like when DVDs like were first like a thing, you know, like yeah, they, yep. they, they were um, starting to get more popular and everything like that. So I put the DVD in and everything like that. We started watching it. Her dad's asleep in his chair, you know, uh, in front of the TV or whatever, and we're sitting on the couch watching it and everything like that. And um, the dad wakes up right in the middle of the part where uh, the main character is, like, cutting a woman and the blood is, like, <laughs> squirting up into his face. Oh, that's and he's, so like, awesome. continuing to make the cut. And and just like blood is like it's just spurting up into his face, <laughs> and he like he wakes up and he sees this and he and he's all kind of like you know shocked and like uh, uh, just discombobulated from being you know just being asleep and everything and he's kind of regaining his bearings and he looks over at me and he goes, you know what do you what do you have against comedies because that's what we were gonna watch next some other comedy movie or whatever. And uh, yeah, he goes. What do you get? That's what do you some jarring it, shit? It, it, to go yeah, from, like sure. a normal, co a normal movie to that. It was funny. Uh, it was pretty funny. I was like, dude, your daughter was the one that wanted to watch <laughs> watch this and everything. Yeah, that was that was good times. So yeah, guys, do uh, like, share, and subscribe. All that stuff. Share, share, share. Um, all right. So another really awesome thing that's going on right now over at Toy Pizza and Knights of the Slice is Jesse DeStazio has a Patreon and also, which actually I've been doing shows on, uh, on Destazapod. Ooh. All right. Well, yeah, just making sure I'm not uh, like messing <laughs> around with the, with so, the cord there. Um, I've been on Destazapod, uh, and with the Toy Boys and we've been talking about the really kind of the toys that really kind of shaped up who we are as toy makers and toy lovers. Uh, our first episode, we Barbie talked dolls. about tons yeah. of Barbie dolls. <laughs> now, our first episode, we talked about the Playmates Wildcats line. Yes. Uh, our second episode, we talked about the video game Superstars line from Toy Biz. Mm -hmm. And really kind of how that started Marvel Legends and, and whatnot. Our next episode, I think, is going to be about... And I was so excited... You know how when you, you want to blurt out your next idea, but you don't want it to get shot down, so you're like, let someone else say something, mm -hmm. and then, so I'm waiting, like, kind of at the edge of my seat when, when we're doing our last episode, and Jesse says, so what do you guys want to do next? And I was like, okay, please, somebody say Blade. Somebody <laughs> say Toy Biz Blade, so I can just agree, and then it could be two versus one, and mm -hmm. then we'll automatically win, and Jesse goes... I'm thinking maybe Blade. I was like, yeah. oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. So I think we're going to talk Toy Biz Blade. Ah, nice. I think that that toy line is the culmination of everything they were doing up till that point. And kind of where we went with toys for the next like five or six years 
came from that line. Mm -hmm. Everything from packaging to articulation, uh, sculpting and accessories all really kind of kind of took really awesome form at that point. So that's what we talk about on that show. Oh, nice. Uh, and then also like our experience with it, like riding our bikes to Toy Works. God, <laughs> toy works. Just stuff like that. I, to, I told we're, we'll, we'll tell the Lighthouse Jeffers story when we do the spot <laughs> there episode. You go. Um, so there's some, some really cool stuff. But there's the uh, Knights of the Slice Action Figure of the Month Club. Mm -hmm. um, you pay however much it was. I, I can't remember the exact. Yeah, the, exact well, there, there's different tiers, I think, to, to For get. For the Patreon, yeah. there is. But, oh, okay. So there's the Patreon, which is um, which you will get different action figures uh if you pay the 25 dollar mm -hmm. amount you'll get one every now and then or whatever but then there's the literally the action figure of the month club you pay a one big lump sum and every month you get one of these so this is the january box uh i'll open it this way so that you guys can't really see where i live <laughs> you bunch of weirdos um so of course i can't open it now isn't there yeah, there's usually a knife around here somewhere. There was an exacto blade around here somewhere. All right, so here we go. Don't worry, I hope this is loud. Yeah. All right, so inside you're gonna get the action figure of the month box, and every he's gonna try to make every month the same so that you can put them on your shelves. And you have the month sticker and everything. Uh, okay. uh, you do have the QR code and the sticker that goes around. It's actually really cool. Um, what? Oh, God, not Keshi. I can't remember what the name of this. Bakuruman sticker style um, on there. I think it's really cool. So I already cut this one open. Um, the, this is the January one. So this is now two months back. Uh, you get a Rift Killer. And that's going to be an all chrome uh, Rift Killer. Or well, gray, and then oh god, this is awesome. Reminds me of Pepsi Man. It's the Riff Killer, uh, half blue, half red, and I do believe there's going to be there's some comics out there online to give the origin of all these characters. Um, get a sticker of that, and then you also get the a sticker of what's on the side of the oh, box. Nice. So I thought that was really really awesome. But every month you get like two or three figures, random stuff. Um, Right now, we have the Material Boys. There's all kinds of cool stuff coming out and different hobs. Nice. So there's going to be stuff, more stuff coming down the line. Um, and I cannot wait to see it. But So give that a look and check out the Knights of the Slice group on Facebook. I think it's one of the best groups out there. They really are super supportive and uh, absolutely love the, the product. So I actually figured them out, guys. Hmm. All right. So, something else I found. Yes. This. And it's so awesome. Uh, this is a Kaiju Survival Guide. That's awesome. And it's made like a uh, like a pamphlet you would find on the ground. Mm -hmm. And that's how they, like, they just threw them over. Yeah. There. This was, all right, so I guess, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I jumped ahead in the surf. We went to the premiere of Pacific Rim. Yes. And the way these were all over the ground, like scattered uh, on the ground okay. to make it look like, oh no, like yeah. they were dropped from a helicopter or something. Um, so it's a Kaiju survival guide. And it really tells you like what you do in the case of a Kaiju attack. <laughs> and like what not to do and get under your desk. There's like a full like duck and cover. Nice. <laughs> um, make sure the kaiju is vacated before exiting. Um, avoid all slime secretions is there another thing to watch out for. Smart. So, and this is from the Pan Pacific Defense Corps. So, I just I found this and I thought that was super awesome. I remember finding that on the um, on the ground. <laughs> well, we might have been on my seat. I don't remember. But so, uh, what you got? What else you got? We got a bunch of stuff over here. Let's see. We got some more action Surprised figures. we haven't seen Ryan Brasher here yet. No, I was about to say maybe like, he's watching Raw, but today's not Monday. No, it's not yeah. Raw, huh? So we got some action figures here. Oh, yes. So talking about stuff that we'll be, I'll be talking about probably on Dostazapod, which have come up. Um, the first Spawn figure from on Toys, not McFarlane Toys, because mm -hmm. uh, this is this is actually a first run. Uh, it was eventually changed over to McFarlane Toys, but on the comic and everything, says Todd Toys. 
It's a huge step in toys. Yeah. I mean, the, everything before this was really kind of very cookie cutter mm -hmm. for the most part. Really, it was what we're looking at right next to Yeah. Um, although I think this was somewhere around the same time as this. Like, probably. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, I was such a huge fan of, like, the Marvel uh, cartoons slash toys from that. For, yeah, so good, the Spider-Man ones and then and then the X-Men ones. I know we talked about the X-Men ones We um, have to do an episode because I have a ton Yeah, of the X-Men ones were so good. Um, that Wolverine. And we all know the yeah, Wolverine. The, <laughs> about, the one with the ring yes, and the hat yep. and the thing uh, and the so pop-out claws. That was so good, yep. And uh, All right, Jamie Marshall, we got Ninja. And uh, how you how's doing, it going? brother? And... Um, yeah, I mean, I remember I had the Spider-Man toy, the one, it had um, it had strings coming out of the palms with, like, mm -hmm. weights on them, and you could, like, time around so he would kind of, like, web swing and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, it was really cool, and the boxes were awesome. Um, yeah, it was great. And I had a couple of these um, Spawn figures, too. Like, I had the Medieval uh, Spawn, and I had a Violator. Such a great figure. Um, but Spawn never, I don't know, maybe I was too young mm -hmm. like for for spawn when it when it first came I out think and we i have to do an episode about spawn i think yeah. we have to do an episode about marvel toys and what about so because the, these are really kind of the toys that uh that developed our taste yeah and, and the things that we really truly do love so uh but this shat this shatterstar is so awesome he's such a ludicrous character mm -hmm. everything for rob liefeld is about making the one weird eye or something uh, and pouches and shoulder pads and I well, love that, it. And like everyone at that time was like some kind of like everybody had some kind of like martial artistry training. Yes, and yeah. no feet. Yeah. You, you just can't feet. <laughs> but like everybody in the nineties knew some kind of martial arts uh and was like some kind of like assassin and uh you know used these like swords and everything like that you know like well, yeah was, see he's got the swords. he's, he's got, got the, the swords yeah swords. exactly so um so now this is actually interesting because this comes we were saying like what year this kind of came from um this is from 96 and at the same time this is a really formative time because they were starting to really experiment with packaging mm -hmm. mcfarlane was doing this with the full clamshell with the comic book and everything inside of it um this this is kind of cool because they put the X on the bubble and they were really working on the cool bubble stuff because mm -hmm. you figure if you're doing it, you might as well do it, right? Yeah. What's the difference? Um, so that was kind of cool. But I think this was a little bit better because they did a little bit of both. They did a unique shaped clam or a unique shape uh, blister with a die cut card. And this is from that 96 period. So if you can see that, that's, that's just super cool. Um, and before this, it was all just very, that was very static. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing cards. too is because as you can see, this is from the X-Men 2099 line. That's mm -hmm. X-Force. I think they probably did it to kind of differentiate from like the main X. Oh, so yeah. there was the X-Men line. And then these are, these are the, you know, part of the X-Men series, but they're different. And this is how and everything like that. So that, that's probably another reason. Um, but I, I do love, there's something about those like, futuristic comic series that I really like. You know, like the X-Men 2099. I love uh, the futuristic Spider-Man, which I think is also Spider-Man 2099 and everything like that. Um, there's just something about them. I, I like that kind of uh, projection of the future. Like, this mm. is what our world is going to look like in 2099 oh, and everything yeah. like that. And, and then, of course, it never really... So, oh, dude, turns, I've been finding so to be many that way. comics, too. And, and that... I almost feel like we could have a five-hour talk on just comics at this point because I pulled out my box of comics when I was first getting into them mm -hmm. from 1991, 92 until like 96. Yeah, and you see that like there's so much image and so much and like, and I'm looking at every issue, remembering every issue that I bought because mm -hmm. at that point every comic was hard fought for. Yeah, like it wasn't like. You know, I wasn't getting 50 comics a week. It was like maybe one or two every three weeks. Yeah, it was the same thing for me. Uh, I I dabbled in collecting comics, but... Hey, at, Ryan. Hey, team. there we go. Speak of, <laughs> you know, speak of the devil, and there you go. Um, the thing about comics for me was uh, as I was trying to get into comics, um, Magic the Gathering got got that. popular... And so I started buying magic cards, and I couldn't afford 
to buy both. I couldn't afford to buy a booster of, of you know, a booster pack of Magic cards and mm -hmm. a comic book because they're both like four to five dollars yeah. uh, at that point, you know. And I was only, God, I was probably like ten or eleven when I first started playing Magic: The Gathering and everything like that. Like I had one of those. Um, Inboxes at my local comic shop where I was like, "Hey, when these issues come in, mm. you know, set one aside for me, and I'll buy them." And it just got to the point where they it, it stacked up because I couldn't buy them because I was buying, buying magic, magic cards. cards. Yeah, and yeah. so eventually the comic shop guy was like, "Hey, like, you know, we have to like either you have to buy these or I can't hold them for you." And I was like, "You know what? Don't don't hold them for me because I'm I'm buying magic cards." So I. I Chose one collection over over another, and um, I, pl I played Magic until I was in high school, and I, yeah, I, I, I played Magic stopped. up until about honestly two years ago. I, I haven't played in quite a while, and truthfully, I could play at any moment. Yeah, like, I love that game. It's... I uh, I I like it, and I also dislike it uh, because I can. I could buy the cards at work. Like we carry them at work, and I could probably get a I, I get a good discount on them and everything like that. And I'd be like, "Yeah, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy all these packs and everything." But then I look at the cards, and I'm just like, Ugh. like it just it just <laughs> like I read so that I'm like, I don't even know what this means. And then like you know there's what? no it, flavor text anymore, and I'm just like that kind of sucks. I, I used to like that where it would give you like a little bit of the story. Yeah, like, like it gave a blurb about about a character or about something that was going on in that world of, of magic, and I'm just like, and now it's all like you have it, it, like when I first started playing magic, you had to know all the rules in your head, and like I understand that they've added probably some more stuff, so it's it's. There's more to it now, yeah. But now they put everything on the card, and it's like there's no, you know, you're not, you're not well, forced to remember anything. That's because cards have been broken, where you realize that hold on a second, I can abuse this. So they now just have to put these ridiculous rules in uh, yeah. play because they realize like the loophole that are that's built into certain cards. Mm -hmm. I've said a million times. Magic the Gathering isn't about the rules that are written. It's the rules that aren't written between the lines. Yeah. That's where the real game lies. That's where uh, anyone but who's truly good, anyone who's winning tournaments mm -hmm. like at a high level, is manipulating the game within the rules because... It's but the that's the thing. They're, they're kind of taking that out of the equation now. With everything being, you because know, they have to. Uh, yeah, well, that's because, the thing. That's well, the because <laughs> the cards get so. Th there was a time when I was playing where there was there was like maybe two or three decks that were so powerful that if someone was playing you with it, it was you might as well just. Oh yeah, I draw mean, your cards and just say you go now. Yeah, because they're just gonna run you over. I mean, there were. I, I remember playing in a certain era where uh, it took wizards probably. It, it took Wizards to release a new set to fix what to fix what happened. Yes, yeah, and and so like I get that, but I just I don't know. There's something about the game now that, and you know what I think it is. I think it's kind of the um, the community. Like mm -hmm. when I first started playing Magic, and I was a younger player, uh, and I would go to the Dragon's Lair in, in West Hartford to play. There were older kids that took you under their wing and was like, no, this is the combo you need instead of that. Or like, I like how you built this deck, but you should do this mm -hmm. instead. Or, you know, like, that's not the way this rule is. It's this and stuff like that. Or like, even help you out with cards. Like, I'm like, oh man, you know, I really need this card to to fix my deck. And they'd be, and like, they'd open up their book. they be like, oh, here you go, man. Like, you know, I'd be like, oh, what do, what do I need to trade? Like, just, just yeah. use it or whatever, you know? And like, I just feel like today at, at the Friday night magic events, it's not that way anymore. Like yeah, I feel it's like it's different. more cutthroat now. Oh, it's certain. You know. Is. Oh, it most certainly is. And there's like really again, there's the people who run after what's called the meta game, mm -hmm. the, the ultimate game that cannot be beaten. And that's who is gonna have. It's like if you can get together seven, eight hundred bucks, you can get this deck and yeah. you can rock anybody. Well, I mean, that's, the deck plays itself. That's and, one of the things that I liked you know, about just, Magic uh, because. One like they would work on these blocks, right? So there was yeah. uh, there was like the um, uh, the Urza's block or whatever, which was like Urza's Saga, Urza's Legacy, and Urza's yep. whatever set, right? 
and and they built they put these cards in there that kind of negated the power cards from the last set. Mm -hmm. But every set, it wasn't just like they were like, you know what, we're gonna keep building on this. We're gonna, but we're going to uh, make a new block and like let's say the red color got a lot of really powerful cards in this yeah, one set. Equalize yeah, it. exactly, which is awesome. At least they were always working on it and they weren't just like well, now stacking the blocks them, are, you know? Well, now the blocks are, they, they've just looked at it differently. It's not equalizing the colors now. It's making the colors stronger by the set. So it, it's this block may be white, green, heavy. The mm. next block will be blue, black, heavy. Yeah. The next block will be... So they're they're not fixing it because oh these guys got too strong they're fix they're they're increasing the powers because this is just what's kind of happening yeah so um, speaking of cards yes uh, so <laughs> guys I, I don't know what's gonna happen here I feel like we're at the point where this might end up freezing up on us so if it does freeze give us a few seconds don't just sign off know that we're gonna see it and we're gonna we're gonna fix it up I just want to make sure that uh, everybody knows that because we we haven't yeah. quite fix the bugs with this one yet so we are going to start now with the cards i am very excited yes so we too. went to the toy vault in the crystal mall and it was really fun that's where i got that 2099 figure uh we got some pops we got uh, you got some dice yes and, uh we got a bunch of really fun stuff that day but we got cards yeah they have an this, old school card yeah, vault. i think this is this is like the the best part of the hall i mean like we got some cool toys mm. but the card packs, I think, are, no, are where it's at. The coolest yeah. ones. So they had everything from the early 90s. The one thing that they have, and I, I really feel like we almost should get a Patreon mm -hmm. just so we could then get enough money so we can get a box of Marvel Universe Series 1 cards so we yeah. can just open them and make videos because we love this. To I don't know if you guys remember this line. On the front of the card was, you know, whatever the character was. And you flip it over and there's a story, maybe the origin, their name, where they're from, all that. Yeah. And then, like, a power chart. Yeah, it would show, it would so show cool. like, their strength, the agility, like, intelligence, or whatever. And it was numbered one through seven. And mm -hmm. seven was the, was the most powerful and obviously one was the least. But they were great because, like, in the newer, in the, um, in the newer, the, the, that newer series... It was kind of like a laser beam, so like it would it would kind of like show like a, yeah. an, or like a beam, and then when it reached the number that it was, it was like a little explosion thing yes. or whatever. Yeah, those were awesome. So I had, cool. I think that was series three then. Maybe, yeah. I, I was a kid, uh, and I had, I was, again, probably like 11 or 12, uh, and I had the whole like series of that one and uh, I, I think they I think they were at my father's house and I, I and absolutely then love them. left them there, yeah. And there was... There was the DC line that was fairly similar at the same time, but um, didn't have the power chart and all that stuff. Um, I really want to open some of these cards and maybe do videos with them because we really do enjoy them. What I liked about those Marvel series cards was that they made cards of characters that were dead and they wrote deceased on yeah. them yeah that was so awesome cool. that was so awesome like, and I, some of that art was really good i remember the crossbones card mm -hmm. was really really cool and i love the spider-man card I, and the wolverine I, and the, the, that's one that has the stan lee mm -hmm. where it's the divided where it's the thor and the captain america and so cool i, I oh, had like a, it was almost uh like a precursor to those like foil cards but it was like a shiny one and it was a dark phoenix and uh, and yeah, it said like deceased across. So like, uh, so cool. It was. And I'm You're pretty like sure. Stamp, it was, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it was like going down awesome. across the front of it, and then on the back too. Like it had that little square, uh, almost like a passport figure or mm -hmm. passport picture of it. It had deceased on it. I was like, that's yeah. I was like, that's awesome. So the first pack here that uh, I have. Is in the it was from the night. I I don't think we paid more than ninety nine cents no. per pack. No, yeah. Uh, this is Bill and Ted's most atypical movie cards. <laughs> Ten triumphant cards, <laughs> and you can win a bodacious trip to San Dimas, California. Nice, or some other non bogus prize. Oh, you save up enough things, you get a top quality cotton Bill and Ted T shirt. There you go. Um, here's your still got those here's our adventure card, and I think this is. A, it's a scratch. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, cards-wise, it, it's just movie clips, really, um, from both movies, though. Um, this is kind of a funny time where it was really just pictures taken directly from the film, and they're really bad yeah. quality. Like, the, 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 
cells themselves are not high resolution, so they don't look so great. But uh, that said, does it give a description about what's going on in the yeah, back too? Yeah. Like it's, uh, so this one, it's a, a picture of them in the future where they're holding up their hands as the statues. Nice. It says, San Dimas, California, 2691 AD. Welcome, welcome to Bill and Ted University, established in 2425. So, um, yeah, little stuff about the movie. Kind of fun, but uh, let's see. Let's see here. Use my nail. Chris, are yeah. you ready to go to San Diego? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I'm ready. Well, sorry, oh. dude. Try again. Oh, uh, we didn't even win like a non bogus thing. It didn't, yeah, yeah, it didn't say like, oh, totally non non heinous. <laughs> Jerks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got for our packs? I bought a pack of Dick Tracy cards from Tops. We are not eating the gum. It's, I don't know if this comes with gum, uh, but I loved. I loved Dick Tr the Dick Tracy movie uh, awesome growing movie. up. Yeah, I wanted the makeup like makeup and the costumes were so good in that. And the watch, the watch was awesome. So there is gum, I think, in this RoboCop. Nice, you kind of feel it, but we're not going to eat it. We ate the gum of like Batman <laughs> a while back, dude. That's yeah, these awesome. are these are kind of like the um, that's a sticker. Yeah. Oh, that's great. These are kind of like the Batman ones where it's got like the picture from the movie and then on the back it describes uh, what he's doing and everything like that. Levi, we're not eating the gum. It's, but yeah, so I, this is the scene. On the back it describes what he's doing on the scene and everything like that. Love but it. this is pretty much like how the Batman ones were. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, these are awesome. The quality of the card is yeah. kind of nice too. Well, it's like a Topps card. so it's a, it's, Well, they're a little glossier than a normal Topps card, but they do have the cardboardy back. Mm -hmm. I really like these. Again, I, I really feel like we should have like a sub show of just like just, opening yeah, cards, cards because I I um I've been trying to collect the uh, WWE Heritage 2019 cards. I love that series. They look like the Tops 1989 baseball cards. Nice. Um, so they have like the future stars and all that stuff. One of Al Pacino's greatest roles here as for uh, real, dude. Yeah, Al Capone, right? Is that no? no he was uh, prune. Not prune face. Um, big boy, big boy. There That's you yeah. There you go, dude. These are really good cards. Yeah. Is there a nice Tess Schumacher? Tess Tess Trueheart. That's right. Tess Schumacher. What yeah. I don't know. Know. But yeah, and then you've got you know the iconic yellow uh, dude, fedora. Dude, the poster from, was awesome. Yeah. No, this movie was really good. I think we actually kind of got to go back and watch that one. Um. Yeah, we are absolutely not eating the gum. <laughs> so, uh, next one is from the Tops uh, RoboCop 2, which is actually written by Frank Miller of uh, Sin City ah, fame. nice. Uh, he took a break from comics and he started writing some movies and stuff for a little while there. And uh, this was one of them. Yeah, there is totally gum in there. It is totally... <laughs> I thought look, he started... Seriously, look, look, look. Wow, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Lee. Listen, 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 wait. <laughs> Can you guys seriously hear that? Like it's like glass. Like, no way, no way. <laughs> just slice up my mouth. So the sticker is um, all right. Just, just Robocop. All these had like one card. Always had a sticker. Yeah, yeah. Because on the, um, it, it, it was one of those ones where you, you uh, it made a character or whatever. So like the sticker on the yeah. back there, yeah, if you had the other ones that it and would this make. This was the time when there wasn't really inserts. No. Like 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 there is now where it's like open a, you know, one in ten cards has a this card mm -hmm. and a future this and a, um these were more like the movie kind of led you through scene by scene. Um so oh, that's kind of cool. This is Kane's brain from at the end of the movie when he rips the brain out of the uh the big robot and smashes it in the middle of the street. Yeah, just I, there's a Back to the Future line mm -hmm. that I really, really want from here. Let's see, anything cool. So this was actually really cool, too. Um, they did this with an Aliens line uh, for the Alien 3 movie, which um, for those of you who've read my bio, I guess, Alien 3 is one of the movies that got me into realizing that you can have a job and stuff that isn't just going to work at a construction site like yeah. it the making of that film i was like opened my eyes to all this stuff so they did a card line and they show there's like a whole subset of the making of mm -hmm. um this robocop 2 line has the same thing going on nice and there's a storyboard and it's a really cool i think we gotta put that up on the instagram it's a really cool photo of um a shootout 
between Kane and RoboCop up in this like crazy tower. Like, so I, I just enjoy stuff like that. Um, you know, practical effects are always great, but oh, of course. Oh, geez, it's Jay Walter Weatherman. <laughs> it says man without a hand, yeah. and it's just the dude who's like, arm, no, no arm. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're gonna have to take a bunch of pictures of these and throw them onto the Instagram um, at this toy life, guys. So I'm gonna grab a swab for DNA, Maya. <laughs> All right, so there must be a, a heritage, maybe subset of Ember Moon because Ryan wants um, if there's a kiss card, like a they kiss the card mm -hmm. insert. Of Ember Moon, he wants to make a clone of her <laughs> yeah. from the DNA. So, uh, yes, what other... but if you make a clone of her, is she really a clone of Ember Moon? Because then you'd mm -hmm. be like raising her and everything like It'd that. Be a and then she, yeah, together. exactly. It just would what look if like she just Ember Moon. turned out to be a Pokemon love and nerd. Exactly. Which is, is actually what Ember Moon is. She had nice. a, a Harry Potter slash Game of Thrones wedding. It was really hilarious. Nice. Uh, so what do you got? So this next oh, pack of cards that I have... I, I forgot about these. <laughs> the next pack of cards I have is a testament to the late 80s and early 90s and basically being able to turn anything into a collectible card set. Speculator collectibles yeah. market. Um, so yeah, I, it just it just shows, I guess, the... Uh, <laughs> the the yuppieism of the time and, oh, and yeah. just marketing anything so i have operation desert shield cards that is so beautiful if you're talking <laughs> about the cards i'm just gonna hit the thing sure so that we don't reset and uh i actually remember my mother buying me packs of these cards growing up uh and i was a i was a kid when operation desert storm slash desert shield was was occurring I think it was 1990, so I was seven. And uh, so, I, I mean, obviously, I didn't really fully grasp the concept of war, but I remember uh, my mother buying me these cards and, and going over them and looking at them while uh, they showed clips of the war on Saturday, Saturday, what is it, Saturday Morning Heroes, the, the, the WWE show, what was it called? Saturday, Saturday morning with superstars. There you go, Saturday morning superstars. So they would show clips of what was going on in the war um, on Saturday morning superstars. Mm -hmm. And I remember going through these packs and like looking at, oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, I pulled my microphone and it yanked the entire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh oh. All right, well, we got a different angle now because I'm not getting up to fix that. So, yeah, let's let's <laughs> open these up and That's see. really funny. Yeah, no, this is totally selling human suffering. Yeah. And every card is like a jet or some kind of bomb. And there are stickers of nation flags. Yeah. So this one is uh, coming ashore. It's a U.S. Navy amph amphibious landing craft. Got the M551 Sheridan tank. A, a mock casualty exercise. This is this is what the hell? True. It really is. Yeah, like this... it's like practicing. Like hey, if you die here, let's practice. Yeah. So all right, there were there were two different sets, and this I actually like this set more than the other one because I like the layout of the card a little bit. You got an armor thing going on here. Jet. They did not have the Iraqi most wanted card yeah. set. They had so many a cards. Helicopter. Yeah, it was a toy vault. I know a lot of people in the different collector groups. Oh, that's like a mecca to go dude. to. Dude, not this card, but oh, the next card. Please I have. tell me it's what I think it is. <laughs> so, please be it a so Saddam Hussein he, sticker. Here is uh, a uh, the the general or Dwight D Eisenhower. Uh, ship there. So but I no. want to wait, wait, before he says anything, <laughs> there was in, in the set that I got a couple packs, I got there was like flags of the countries involved in the war. I got an Iraqi and an Iranian flag, nice. which is really hilarious. But then also, like, there was a sticker for the AK 47, and it explains, like, oh, man, why man. do these come, why do these guerrilla groups love the AK 47? Just the craziest, like, stuff written on there. So, dude, look at, hold on, I'm going to show you what I got. 
Get out of here. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. That has to go on your microphone. That has to now go right here. So I have a oh, trading man. card for George Bush. We That's... usually have a George H.W. Bush. Mother. Oh, that dude. is so funny. That's amazing. <laughs> I thought it was going to be so insane. That would have been good too. I also have this one. With uh, George, our President George Bush, Thanksgiving uh, in, oh, in the nice. desert. Yep. Oh, with Schwarzkopf right behind Yeah, him. There you go. Stuff. See, look at that. Right. And then we've got uh, the F-15 Eagle. Oh, my God. I and can't the, believe you got George Bush. And there. the F-4 Phantom Two. But, yeah, George Bush is clearly the standout in this, that is just in this pack. Funny. Oh, God, awesome. Who'd ever thought when, when George Bush became President of the United States... Who'd, did, who'd have ever thought have that he'd be a trading? Yeah, exactly. That he'd be a trading card <laughs> featured on at this toy life. That's right. So yeah, we're we're gonna try to do our live show now on, on Wednesdays. I think That's yeah, a, a better day for I think both of us. It didn't happen this Wednesday because there was seriously an ice storm that happened here, and there's nothing we could do. Uh, we have one more pack yes. of cards, and it was a weird one. Oh no, yeah. that's awesome. No, these are good. Oh, yeah. that's so good. So. I have uh, the Young Indiana Jones Chronicle cards here, which I think this is a legitimate collection versus the Operation Desert yeah, Storm. Yeah, so but... um, I really, I, you know, every time we open a packet, I really think we should start doing videos because these aren't really that much on eBay to get like a box of no. like Bill and Ted cards are like six bucks. But I think we should do videos of just opening these packs because uh, they're ones... kind of bleh. Really? Yeah, I mean, like they're yeah, they're, they're just like yeah, they're just like stills. the picture. Yeah, exactly. There's no like border or anything like that. I mean, the back is kind of cool. Is pack? Yeah. So, so these are a pro set, and pro set is um, oh, not as good as tops. The kind of in the neighborhood of skybox at the time, mm -hmm. but not as good as skybox cards. Um, they they had an NFL line that was okay. Uh, they. They were one of the first guys, I think, if I if I'm remembering correctly, to do full frame cards, like no border, full frame cards. That's yeah, that's what I don't like about this set. Um, it doesn't have a border, and it doesn't really kind of. It's just very plain. I do like the back though, the descriptions that they're giving of the scene, and uh, just the background um, design is really cool with the uh, the Chinese figures there, because this is uh, of an episode when they were in China. That's kind of cool. See again, this one's just so kind of seven cards per pack plus three activity cards. Yeah. So see again, this one's just kind of boring. Yeah. It's a plain straight up of uh, you know, young Indiana Jones there. Again, the same kind of back border there when they're in China. See again, the back is awesome because this scene takes place when he was uh with Pancho Villa's men in Mexico, and on the back it's got you know, the Mexican uh, characters and, uh, you know, the bullets and everything like that. Like, I thought the back, to me, is cooler than than the front. Yeah, there's yeah. more detail in the back. Yeah, exactly. You have, you have all these really cool graphics. And Ryan in, in the chat is saying that no border is dumb. I agree. I really love, I was just saying, the, uh, the Topps Heritage cards because they're using these old designs from the mid-80s and early 90s mm -hmm. uh, before they, they got into the no border stuff with Stadium Club and all that, the, the, all that nonsense. But um, right yeah. now they, they're using the 89 model, and it's so good. The packs are like crazy thick, and they have that cardboard back. Uh, they have subsets. Like this year, I think it's a Ric Flair subset or a Macho Man subset. I really don't even care about those. I just want the regular, the regular set. Yeah, I mean, again, this one, it's, uh, it's from when he was in the military. But again, the back is much cooler. It shows like the troops and all that stuff. Um, this, it does have a 3D card oh, here that's with, awesome. yeah, with see, a 3D. See, that must be the activity card. Yeah, so there you go. All right, that's, see, that's pretty cool. I got to pop out the little eyes. Yeah. And then you got a little 3D jammy jam here. And then there's a help young indie find the hidden treasure C card. So there's these hidden treasure. Do you find it on the card or are they? Is it, oh, it looks it's like a, a book. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't see that part. Oh, you got the gun or the No, I got the, the, motorcycle. the motorcycle. Okay. So, okay. okay. All right. Well, actually, I kind of like the drawing on the motorcycle, truthfully. But it uh, must be some kind of sub game going on there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I really do want to open up some packs. I, I like, oh, I really love the WCW, 1989 WCW line. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Um, 
Who'd have thought the Operation Desert Storm would have been the best of the... For real, dude. <laughs> so, uh, this weekend, actually, February 23rd, I'll be at Northeast Wrestling uh, interviewing King Brian, who is also a WWF, WWE Hasbro slash Mattel Retro Customizer. Nice. I did not know this. His name's Brian Anthony, and the whole time I'm like, I'm like, oh, I know, I like this guy's customs, and then I find out, like... Oh shit! It's the same dude. Nice. Like, wait a second. Yeah. Like, you know, he gets in the ring and he does the whole bit, and he's got the muscles, and then he goes and paints hey, custom. Whatever. Hey, you bought it because you love it, yeah, right? Exactly. So, um, what else do we have over here? Because I got a ton of stuff still. All right, well, let's do some pops real quick. Sure. Um, for Valentine's Day this year, I actually got for uh, Mommy T. I got her a pop. We don't usually get each other very many gifts. Um, but this time, uh, we didn't, I just kind of saw this and said, we kind of got to have it. Um, years ago when we met, I was a karaoke DJ. Mm -hmm. uh, I was back I remember early those times, on, yeah. th those days. Yeah. That's when we, when these, so we're really starting to get together and we would sing, uh, Grease songs together. Cause you know, we were in our early twenties and we'd like Grease. So, uh, we sang summer nights and we'd sing whatever, you know, so uh, they just Funko just put out Grease Pops mm -hmm. for the 40th anniversary, and I got her the Sandy Olsen from the Carnival at the end with the Tell Me About It stud. Nice. Uh, but I, I'm kind of happy that we didn't do the show last week because I didn't want to kind of ruin the surprise of it all. But it is pretty great, um, and remember, it does come with the stand here. Um, oh, she got little painted toenails. Yeah, yeah. There you go. They're getting better with the details. They really are. So uh, there she is with the yeah, good old Sandy. That's actually kind of awesome. Uh, then the other one that I grabbed. Uh, yeah, there's a new Britney pop. Mm. I, I almost want to get the Britney pop just to have it, just to be like, check it out, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> so this was one we know that I, I was going nuts for, for the uh, San Diego Comic Con version. I'm mm -hmm. very excited to have the regular version of it, and it's the Notorious B.I.G. in the in the um, the crown. I think this is so amazing, and just kind of proves how far we've come with pops. Yeah. Um, and as I say, he's got this giant head, so he won't exactly. Stand up. There you go. He's gonna fall over in two seconds. You're gonna move your arm. Oh, you. Oh, he has it, and he wants a new one. Um, okay, so he's just gonna hoard him. Oh, a different one. Oh, jeez. So it's never going to be enough is what Brad Well, he could buy saying. another Britney one and then customize it and make his own Britney pop. I mean, I don't I don't I don't sanction that. I'm just saying that's what you could do. <laughs> I do so, not endorse that whatsoever. Hooli bully. Yeah. So um what oh what do you have for, for pops? pops? I, see, see I, told you. I have a couple of pops here. This one is actually a gift. Uh, so it was my birthday a few weeks ago, beginning of February, and uh, one of our viewers slash one of my good friends um, bought this for me because I've just for whatever reason been too lazy to buy it. I don't know why. I don't know why I never. I, I never got it, but um, she kept asking me what I wanted for my birthday, and I, you know, I didn't want to go like crazy and be like, mm -hmm. oh, I need this. So I was like, buy me a pop because that's what I really need. So, she, well, I don't really need it, but, you know, for my collection. So it's finally Go Tanks. So, that's Michelle, so awesome. thank you. This is, and this uh, is the as an Entertainment Earth exclusive, or was it just a regular? I think it's just a regular one, okay. yeah. I thought that, yeah. I thought it was an exclusive to, to somebody. Either way, I have Either it. Way, yeah, yeah, I've got it. It's in my collection. So, awesome. yeah, Michelle, thank you. So you're going to be throwing you. that into your collection at home, or are you going to put it in? Uh, it's going to go in my collection at home, right. because this is something I need for my, um, yeah, like, this is, this is one of the figures I need for gotcha. my... See, it's funny. I started collecting the Dragon Ball Z Saiyan pops because I was trying to limit myself on how many pops I needed, and now they just keep making more and more Saiyan pops, and I'm hey, and you're and I'm buying them, yeah. <laughs> so and you just got that Trunks figure art figure. Yes, exactly. And so then awesome. I also got this Super Saiyan Gohan. 
Uh, he is a Galactic Toy exclusive. This uh, is pop. what I thought was the exclusive, or that this is the exclusive. I you know. ah, okay, yeah. Um, this one I bought on my own, so it was, I guess a gift for myself. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I got really That's lucky. Awesome. I was I, like I was online uh, searching for uh, some of the pops I needed, and I just happened to. Uh, AKA Dragon Ball Fleshlight. Exactly. Well, I've already got one of those. Uh, so it's the end is it's just like a Vegeta. the end is just a Dragon Ball. You're just putting it's a Super Saiyan pair. <laughs> so, so I was looking online for some of the pops I needed, and uh, I happened to find this on the Galactic Toys site, and I ordered it immediately because I needed it. Ryan, I didn't know that you have a figure arts figure. Oh, yes. Um, I have grab a figure. Grab it if you want. It's yeah. right up there. Oh, yes. Here, I'll grab that. Yeah, we have it in the case there. So um, Someone wasn't watching the last time. We will Yeah, seriously. Jerk. Oh, just clip it on your, under your, your microphone there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, Chris ended up getting a figure arts trunks. It's the Super Saiyan trunks. Uh, we have it up in the case right now, actually. Uh, it is really super sweet. I love the thing. Um, and I actually set up the blue. I have the blue fire effect uh, we have inside of the case that's around it. But uh, Ryan's been sleeping. So there you go. Right, let's, move, let's move some of these figures back here. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> that's Chris's. Uh, that we figured that case behind Krizza would be his case because you guys always see it. Right now, it's it's like all tilted. The camera we should have had to fix the camera. Yeah. Oh well. Too late. So, I'm already it, sitting down. Yeah, I'm sitting not, down, not, not getting back up. It. Uh, so yes, I I got this figure off of Amazon. Uh, apparently, people didn't realize that I'm not the biggest fan of Amazon. For so, the dumbest reason. It's, it's not a oh dumb God, reason. It's it's so it's, dumb. It's, Dude, it's the it's dumbest. You're legit. mad at a sale. <laughs> you're the people who come into GameStop and are like, three for, three for five dollars no. for $4.99 games? But wait, but what if I only want to get two and not three? <sighs> That's not it. I am legitimately upset at Amazon because I was trying to buy something and they wouldn't ship it to me because it was an add-on item. So they wouldn't ship me the item. I only needed two things. The mustache. I needed wax. And I needed a mustache comb. And they but wouldn't. But that's the deal. And they wouldn't. But how is it a deal if they're not going to ship me the mustache comb unless I spend $25? Because if you wanted to get the add-on item, you had to spend $25. Yes, but I didn't want to spend $25. And I tried. But because I, you wanted to buy an add-on item. I oh just my God. needed the two things. You're the person who seriously argues with needed, you at work. I just needed the two things. <laughs> I just know that you're that person. You're, you you yeah, no. you have the spiky hair in the back. No. And the, the brush hair. I, it's the I, I want to speak to your manager. I needed two things. Yep. And then once I realized that they wouldn't ship me the comb uh, without unless I spent $25, I tried to get to $25 and I couldn't. I spent three hours shopping on Amazon. <laughs> well, that's so your I own could, damn fault. So for not I could reading get, the rules. So I could get You're a terrible, two things. You know what? I so, want to play you in magic so I can yeah, slap you around so the room. I, you don't read the rules. I just no, because with magic, all the rules are up here. I don't need them. I don't need the rules on the card. But anyway, so I refuse to order from Amazon because I'm like, this is stupid. So like, I just, dumb. I just want a comb. Oh my god! So I went on Etsy and I spent, <laughs> I bought I bought the comb off so of I Etsy. To, I yeah. think Amazon is, owns Etsy. <laughs> yeah. Well, either way, at least Etsy uh, shipped me the item that I that I needed, and I didn't have to spend an extra fifteen dollars <laughs> for them to get it to me. But anyway. So people didn't realize that I that I don't like Amazon, and they got me Amazon gift cards for yeah. Christmas. So <laughs> I bought a figure arts figure uh, for Christmas as a so, gift. So speaking with of just gift cool cards. bins that I've been finding of of stuff down here, um, giant Donkey Kong. Nice. <laughs> so this is like an all Nintendo box. Um, there's a Ganondorf. Which is actually just super cool. Look this at is the from, schnoz uh, on Ganondorf there. Yeah, this is from the Majora's Mask from like 99 or something like that. Uh, made by, I think, like Toy Arc or someone weird. It's, it's not by like a North, it's not by like Toy Biz. It's just some like off random company. Um, ooh. So 
the World of Nintendo Wario. Nice. This is the... Oh, this is a Figure Arts Mario. Have you ever seen the Figure Arts Mario? No. Oh, yes. He's awesome. I, and uh, he changes faces for facial expressions. Yeah. The hat comes off and the face comes off. Uh, we got some Pokemon here. So this is the, the, the Zelda from that one. Or no? from the Link. <laughs> Look at his... Yeah, yeah, it gets like floppy swords. <laughs> it was made out of like a soft PVC. Um, these are really cool figures, but um, this, so this is actually what I wanted to pull this out for, is actually these two. So uh, there is a, there's a blind box line by, uh, it's a Rockman X line. They're usually about 10 bucks a piece, but they, these are what the figures are. Uh, we, we got this oh, one yeah. at Occupy Underground. Uh, I think it was it was oh, man, I forgot $10. to bring I forgot to bring the stuff I got from Occupy. Oh, that's right, you bought yeah. a bunch of stuff. That's mm -hmm. right. So uh, these figures are all randoms. I got this one in a red and white one. Um, they're really cool, and then like scale wise, I kind of like the scale because they're a little bit smaller. But near the World of Nintendo stuff, like I feel like Mega Man is smaller. He, yeah. He's, um, but so by Ertl, um, Ertl had made a. Um, Pokemon trainer card or Pokemon trainer figure. This is the first one. The new one actually has a hand that has a Pokeball. I, I highly suggest getting it if you can. Um, of course, oh, as I right. say, like the legs not <laughs> popping. Way on. to gear that up. <laughs> oh, I really gear the hell right out of this thing. And I guarantee right now Josh is watching this episode and he's like, "What the hell? Are you taking travel?" <laughs> So I, I actually told the Lighthouse Jeffers story, which we'll save for our spot episode. Yeah. Um, but this Pokemon trainer is super cool. Um, it, it's just kind of like a bare bones figure, but the scale of it's just right. Yeah. Like, even in scale with the seven inch figure or the six inch scale figures, he's because he is a kid, so mm -hmm. he's got that kind of smaller stature. Definitely worth it, and he comes with a Pikachu that fits on the shoulder perfectly. Oh, uh, awesome! Yeah, so definitely Did get out come there. with a Pokeball. Uh, yes, he does come with Pokeballs, and he comes with a hand with the Poke Dex. Okay. Um, what line is what, Ryan? Uh, Ryan's asking what line is that. Um, I think this was just the just Pokemon Pokemon XY, I want to say. Uh, it was from a few years back, 2004, 13 or 14 maybe. And of course, there's going to be like no writing on it anywhere. It's going to be in a weird spot. Wait, here we go. Oh, made by Tommy, actually. Sorry, not Ertl. Oh, the Mega Man he wants to know. Oh, the Mega Man is by Bandai. It's yeah. uh, the Rockman X line. Uh, it's a Rockman blind box, and there's a Dr. Wily and a few other really, really cool figures in it. Um, I'll try to find the package if I could find it, but I really don't remember. It was straight up Japanese. Um, but, so, like, absolutely worth everything. Yeah, yeah, we got that at that um, Japanese specialty store in Connecticut. It's called the Akiba Underground. Yep. Uh, we, we recorded there back on Five Alive. Yeah. We did a live show from there. Oh, that was a, yeah, that's a great store. Um, they have a, real, a lot of really cool uh, Gunpla stuff. Uh, they've got some manga, um, anime. They do the Friday Night Magic as well. They have um, specialty drinks and specialty snacks from Japan. Uh, they have like the, the, the blind boxes. Cakes. Yes, the, the, bean, <laughs> the bean paste uh, buns and all that good stuff. Um, that was really fun. Yeah, and they also have the the blind box uh, stuff, the Rockman, and, and a couple other ones. Uh, I think there was um, some Gundam. Yeah, yep. there was um, there was a ton of Gundams, and they they actually have a really good gun plus section there. Um, they would had the, the the pens and mm -hmm. a whole bunch of that stuff. Um, oh, there was something else they had there that I really liked. What was it? It was the Gothic Lolita clothes. Oh, it was the yeah, Lolita clothes. Yeah. Yes, the Gothic <laughs> Lolita. I'm sorry, that's what it was. <laughs> I thought so. No, they had a ton of manga, and, and they had like a four dollar manga section. Yeah, I bought. One piece, I bought really three uh, volumes of the School Rumble uh, manga, which uh, School Rumble is one of my favorite animes of all time. Uh, it's one of the series I kind of attribute getting me back in, into anime. Cause like mm -hmm. I liked anime when I was you know when I was in high school because Dragon Ball was coming out, and they were airing you know Cowboy Bebop and. Um, Gundam and you know Samurai uh, Dragon Samurai or whatever it's called the Outlaw Star you know FLCL they had a bunch of stuff coming oh, out fully cool. yeah exactly they had a bunch of stuff coming out at that at that point um, but I kind of had stopped watching it for a little bit and uh, what happened was I had gotten really sick and I was bedridden and all I could pretty much do was watch Netflix mm. and they had added a bunch of anime onto Netflix. 
and I ended, I ended up watching School Rumble, and I was like, oh my god, this is hilarious. So then it just got me back into it again, and, and really kind of loving anime again, and, and I started watching, you know, more more shows and, and all that good stuff. Uh, but School Rumble was kind of one of those first reintroductory animes that I started watching, so I was like, you know what, I, I, I'll buy the... Um, I'll buy the the three volumes that they have. They were four bucks each. It was a good deal, yeah. All right, so I'm finding out that it is called Mega Man Volume One Bandai Sixty Six is the company that the the sub company that had made it. Um, I'm trying to find a link here for you, Ryan, so that maybe I can send it over to yeah, you here and, somehow because I I know you guys can't link. put links. Yeah, <laughs> I know you guys can't put links into the uh, into the chat, but I can. So let's. See see here maybe this one will do it all right throw that into the chat maybe oh it's not letting me do that okay let's see let us see sorry Technical guys difficult no nope, i just didn't i, I don't yeah. think i hit that there uh, we go whoa holy link there that's a link yeah. so click that link that is to what it is at the very least i can't support that website i don't know if it's secure or anything they just have exactly what the package is there's a lot of kanji on there and mm -hmm. I, I don't read that <laughs> so I, I couldn't begin to tell you um how dare you how dare i you so what swine. else do we have i think that i think, I think we might have gone it, through yeah. a lot of it if not all of it huh gotta look at like the wreckage of like it looks like christmas morning back here yeah i mean we bought we a lot of stuff those, got those. yeah yeah i think that's pretty much it huh mm -mm. pretty much yeah i started setting up my power rangers back here i'm pretty pretty nice proud of that, actually yeah. you can see I've got a plethora of colors yeah, it's good. Plathra. They're releasing a lot of really good, like, 20th anniversary Power Ranger stuff. That's so oh, awesome. So uh, I've seen a couple of the um, the Transformers, you know, mm -hmm. like the, what do you call them, where they put the coin in there and then... Morphers. More, there you go, Morphers. So, yeah, I've seen a couple of Morphers. They've released one that's got, like, uh, I think it's got all the coins for the original five, right? Mm -hmm. There's five of them. And then uh, I don't. I, <laughs> and then they released a morpher for the two coins for uh, the Green Ranger and the White Ranger. Yeah. Uh, and they all make the sounds stuff like that. I, they've got a dragon dagger. Uh, they've released some. They've re-released some. Um, Who needs a re-release dragon dagger? Yeah. You got the dragon dagger. Exactly. Uh, they also have made uh, the dra the white tiger sword. There was it Sa Saba or whatever. Saba. Yeah, so they they re released that toy, um, and it looks really awesome. All of the all the twentieth anniversary stuff. All right, is, I'm is just fantastic. saying, this is a clean battery compartment. Yep. I am relatively sure if I grab some double A batteries that this will work. Probably. And no, Ryan, no My Hero Academia. No, we. No. You know what? We never really got into it. I don't know. We kind of missed it. I, I think. I I hear the second season is better, mm -hmm. uh, but I did not like the first season at all. Uh, when the character whines and complains for twenty minutes about how he can't do it and how he's well, yeah, the worst. that's always been your... yeah. He's the worst, and and all this other stuff, and then in the in the final ten minutes succeeds. <laughs> when every episode is like that, you kind of stop well, caring okay, that think, this dude right. fails. So that's interesting you kind of say that because Sentai, at its very core, that's an episode of Sentai. They can't beat the bad guy until they do a thing, and now they can suddenly beat the bad guy. It's the same episode over yes, and over again. Yes, but see, in, in the Power Rangers slash Sentai... They're not like we're the worst, we're failures. Okay. Uh, th that's this dude. Every time, uh, mid what, Midoki or whatever, mid, mid I don't even know. Whenever, nice. <laughs> it does not sound good. <laughs> Whenever the main character starts to fail, uh, he always automatically is. Oh my god. I'm a failure. I'm the worst. You know, All Might wasted his gift on me. I can't do it. 
And it's it's always like that. And then all of a sudden he succeeds and he's like, wait, oh my wait, god, wait, I wait. did it. Is aren't you a Dragon Ball fan? I am. Isn't that basically Dragon Ball? No, because uh when Goku fails, he he's he doesn't again, he doesn't whine about it. He's like, I need to train to get better. And like okay. I and but this kid's like, no, nah, I can't do it. And then he does it. Okay. You know, there was one cool episode where uh in season one where the teacher was trying to get a gauge of like all their powers and everything like that. And he basically said, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I need to see like what you can do and everything like that. And basically the main character is like, well, I have, I can't use any of my powers because if I do, I'm going to hurt myself. So he, he just kind of goes through, through the motions like normally. And he's like constantly at the bottom of the ranking. And then um, I think they're throwing baseballs or something like that. They're trying to throw the baseball as far as they can. And he takes the the baseball and he has it basically on his like pinky fi- or on his pointer finger, and he uses that to throw the ball and he uses all of his power in the finger and he throw it, and the ball goes and then of course his like fingers broken. That was awesome. That was like one of the coolest scenes. Well, that's, after that, it was I awful. love that idea of of uh, super strength is great, but if you don't have invulnerability too, or you're not impervious, yeah. then you don't want to use super strength because your body's not ready for it. Um, they do that in a, in a comic book called Invincible, where the main character loses his powers and he's getting his powers back one by one, and he gets super strength back first, but does not get invulnerability back first. Yeah. Or at, at the same time, so he goes to punch like a garbage can or a wall or something like that, and the wall shatters, mm-hmm. but so does his arm and like every pot like splintered all and of his like, bones. And, and I understand that because that is a part of it and he, and he needs to learn how to harness his powers and everything like that and he, and he does need to train to to basically have the body to withstand that punishment. But the fact that every time he he fails, it's automatically he's a failure <laughs> and he's the worst. And okay. All Might's wasted his power on me, and he's crying, and it's like, dude, come on, man. Like, I know right, you're going to so succeed. I know in the last 10 minutes, you're going to pull it out of your ass Let's hear what happens win. here. Let, let, let's, let's hit this thing. And, and, cause, so you, it's not just push the button and it makes noise. You have to hold the button down. Yep. So let's see. The main, now, this is the, the main button here. What's that one? Yeah, I don't okay. know. Okay. No, that's, I think, what it's supposed yeah, to sound uh, like. May, is that... Yeah, that's one of the songs where he calls the dra- yeah, where he calls the dragon zord. Yeah, yep. All right. Now let's see. This is the middle one here. And that's just the theme song. Right. This this bat last one better be yeah. There you go. Okay, that's kind of cool. It sounds like absolute crap, and I think it's always sounded like crap, but just the gloss of time. Exactly. Um, or the batteries are way too powerful for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's screaming. It's like I've got all the power. Uh, that's awesome, though. If you guys want to watch a really good anime that's that's airing right now this season, watch uh, Magical Magical Girl Spec Ops uh, Soka. It's a lot of words. How do you pronounce the Asuka? Sorry, Magical Girl Spec Ops Asuka. That anime is off okay. the chain. It's like again, because where do we find said anime? A Crunchyroll. That's where okay. I watch my right? it, it. It um simulcast on Friday. Um, if you like the Madoka Magica series, then you will like this one because okay. it's not just like oh hey we're magical girls and we need f- we're we're gonna use friendship to save the day. Like there is blood, gore, All like right. people's hands are getting chopped off, people's like uh, kneecaps are getting shattered and stuff like that. It is over the top violent. Uh, and it is awesome. Watch cool. it. Yeah, it's it's really good. The action so is, is we're going to be doing a, an all audio podcast on our Anchor FM at This Toy Life. Um, so when we do that, uh, it's it's going to be about what we're watching, what we're reading, what we're into, uh, which is what is normally part of this show. But we're going to break it apart because we've already gone an hour and a half, and we've only talked about toys. Yeah. So um, I think we should wrap up tonight here. And again, we're going to have some podcasts, some new stuff coming up. Um, I th- we're going to do some polls here coming up in the community section. So like, share, and subscribe with the notifications, and you'll get notifications when we put the polls up about what episodes would you like to see us talk Britney about Spears. things in the future. It's all Britney Spears. It's all Britney. Yeah. Um, I'm not even going to put that up as a joke, <laughs> because if I do, like, we're going to go from, I don't even know how many subs we have now, to, like, 
ten thousand, and it's all because Ryan is going to be like, <laughs> yeah, everyone vote, vote for, for Britney, Britney Spears. Yeah. Make these two guys talk about Britney Spears for an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, we're I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, so we'll we'll talk about those over on the other one. Um, and what else? Oh, Twitch. You yes. What game were you going to be playing? I might be streaming Anthem. Uh, that's coming out. Uh, tonight slash tomorrow uh it's kind of a destiny style of multiplayer game uh except with um your character is called a lancer i think that's what yeah and you check it out on this toy life yeah it's kind of like a mech type thing you get into these like suits of armor but the armors do different things and is is. this titanfall 2 no it's really not i mean it is not be titanfall it is is made by uh bioware slash ea but uh no it is not unfortunately all right so uh yeah at this toy life and i think you're going to be probably in silent mode not really interacting quite as much just kind of playing yeah just playing the game um and uh, we'll we'll see kind of how that goes. Mommy T's got a couple games that I'd like to her her to be playing. And Matt, hopefully, um, a friend of the show, um, Matt Babbitts, we actually got to give him a big congratulations. He was just accepted for the Disney College program, and he's going to be working for Disney. Wow, he's really excited. Yeah. It this is like a lifelong like what this kid is. As long as I've known this kid for like the last fifteen years, that's all this kid has ever mm-hmm. wanted to do. So um, it's really awesome that he's doing it. He plays Kingdom Hearts three, however, and he's like super obsessed. You you know Matt is, yes. is nuts for it uh, to the point where his parents are like, "Do we just not tell him that we saw this yeah, item?" <laughs> yeah, his uh, um, his mom and I think sister came into the store yep. and uh, they they picked up the game for him. And uh, I think at the time we had a sale going on where all the Kingdom Hearts stuff was like a twenty five percent off or something like mm-hmm. that. We had this huge Keyblade, and they were debating about whether they wanted to buy it or not. And I told them it was on sale and everything like that, and and they they were like, "Nah, I don't think so." And, and I was like, and they were like, "Well, don't tell him." And I'm like, "Oh, well, I'll text Bobby, <laughs> and then Bobby can tell him that, yeah. that you guys didn't buy the Keyblade." And then they're like, no, no, don't do that. And I was like, oh, you know, I think I'm on Instagram. I can, I can direct message him and, and let him know that that you guys didn't buy him uh, his. So, uh, so yeah, though Matt is a, is a super fan and, and a friend of the Toy Life family. So uh, yeah, him though working there is going to be so great. Um, yeah, there's going to be. Is he going to be doing stuff, stuff the at the park or? Uh, I think he's. Or, gonna, I think he says he's going to be a lifeguard. Okay. So um, I know that he wants to be a performer there, mm-hmm. and he's currently going to college. Um, with, I believe, uh, uh, drama as his major. Uh, kid can sing, kid can dance, uh, he can do the whole thing, so I really would love to see him in one of their stage shows. Uh, it, I know you've you've either haven't been or have or never been or haven't been in a long time to Disney World. I've never been to Disney World, um, no. They have some really awesome, every park is starting to get a really nicely developed stage show. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Finding Nemo show is like next level cool. I think we talked about it. Yeah, I think you showed me pictures uh, of it where they were all wearing like blue suits or whatever. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you know. it's really cool. Mm-hmm. So like the, the character who's Nemo, uh, the actor's on the stage and using a puppet of the fish and the puppet is like articulated in the craziest ways to make it really look like it's swimming. And mm-hmm. they, they use a lot of really cool um, practical, like in life practical effects. And it, it's a really fun show, but the kid can sing like that. And nice. Huh? It's, uh, it, you know, there's a Lion King show, there's a this show, that show. And, and I really think he'd fit just about anywhere. So, hey, congratulations yeah. to Matt. Congrats. Um, what else? I think that's all we got, bud. All right, so I guess with that, we've been uh, This Toy Life. I'm Bobby T. And I'm Chris. And remember, you bought it because you love it. That's all that matters. And keep celebrating This Toy Life for life. All right. <laughs> God, it's been so long since we've done a show. I know. And yeah, now's the part where you got to turn off the... Do I? Turn off the camera, jerk. i got to turn off the camera. Turn off the camera. Now that, now that it's, it just went... Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So, hey, again, like, share, and subscribe. Um, and, you know, we're awesome. <laughs> so, it was the last thing.